guys. Ah, there's the man. There's the. How's it going? Right there. Good man. How are you? Pretty good, dude. Right on. Thank you for uh, coming to hang out here on the Toddcast in Vancouver, Canada. I guess the, your neck of the woods, man. Local boy, Delta, kicking some ass. Hometown, born and raised. Yeah, kicking yeah. some names, man. It's 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 forever home. That's for sure. Yeah, I bet. yeah. I bet when you when you do come back for visits, it must feel just like you know, man. This is home, like Vancouver. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's nothing quite like you know getting off the plane there or whatever. Just the air is just that much fresher. Like it's really hard to, like, it's, it's a true, real tangible thing. Like when you, just when you get up there, it's, I don't know, something about it. And where do you live right now then? I live in Orlando, Florida. So probably couldn't be further away from uh, yeah. DC. Yeah. Truly. Hey, yeah, it's weird. You know, you go away, like, you know, I've been down to Florida myself and then you come back to Vancouver and you're like, man, this is why the city is so fucking amazing. Cause I know you, know, you go, know. go somewhere else and then come back. Yeah. And like, okay maybe vancouver is one of the best in the world yeah you're not it's getting the, there for sure it is the third most expensive it's getting crazy because really? i you know i still got family back home and friends yeah. and everything and i just can't believe how in, insane it's getting dude it's nuts man like you it, yeah even a million bucks would just just get you like i don't know like an apartment almost at this point yeah like, yeah it's, it's wild it's yeah. wild we were like doing some research into our like our childhood home in north delta or whatever my sister was looking it up yeah. and like my parents bought it in uh i think like 92 or 93 for like i don't know seventy thousand eighty thousand dollars and it's like <laughs> worth one and a half million now <laughs> it's like what it's yeah. just unreal it, it's crazy yeah all right so kyle uh we we're mentioning you know obviously you're local local kid local boy yeah and ass dude uh you know you're working your way through eccw here of course in, in 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 bc um you're now in aew uh all elite wrestling of course you did uh, wwe and nxt mm -hmm. uh, you went over to uh, uh new japan and did some wrestling over there um i guess right to it for for the current stuff like talk about a killer organization to work with with aew absolutely um coming to aew is just kind of because in wwe i never really had that experience of like being on the main roster or whatever i was in nxt um yeah. but i never got called up to raw or smackdown so now with aew it feels like i'm having that main roster experience i'm, I'm part of an organization that's on national TV that's selling out arenas all over and we're traveling. Like I'm, I feel like a real wrestler uh, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's an amazing group to be a part of and, and everybody there is awesome from the talent to the production staff, to the producers and coaches backstage to Tony Khan, the man that owns it himself. Like it's, it's an unreal group to be a part of and I'm, I'm super stoked about it. So a lot of people wonder, like, why did you leave the WWE and the NXT? Is that part? Is that part of the reason why? Is because you weren't being moved up to the to the main? Well, so my contract came up, and there was an offer there to remain with the company. I'm not sure what that would have entailed exactly if it was to stay in NXT, um, to move up to the main roster. And I, I knew a lot of their focus was changing and what they were looking for, and I just kind of wanted to explore my options and, and see what else was out there. Um, I had a lot of friends at AEW guys that I came up with in this business that I, that I traveled the roads with that I'd spent tons of time in Japan and ring of honor with. And I, you know, put out some feelers and there's interest there as well. And um, you know, it's always best to just bet on yourself and go where your gut's telling you to go and follow the heart. Right. So yeah. it just felt like the, uh, 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 the right move for me. And I'm, I'm happy that I made that choice. Nice, nice. So, so talk a little bit about the, the wrestling over in New Japan Pro and like, you know, uh, must have been super cool to be on the other side of the freaking yeah. planet doing what you do. Yeah, getting into wrestling, uh, it was always one of my biggest goals was to wrestle in Japan just because they treat it so much like an actual sport. Like you, in the, the newspapers, the next day, there's the baseball results and then the wrestling results. Like it's the wrestlers are revered. They're like real athletes. And I really appreciate that so much because in my opinion, we, we are well, real you athletes. You guys are real athletes. Give me yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a stigma, you know, of course, about pro wrestling, whatever. Uh, we don't need to go down that path because everyone yeah. knows. But, no, no. Uh, but, but working in Japan was awesome. And my style really caters to that as well. A very realistic, hard-hitting sort of, uh, I guess you could say, MMA hybrid sort of wrestling style. And the Japanese fans really 
really enjoy that style and, and they, they get it and they respect it. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of success there and I loved going to Japan. I really am looking forward for that opportunity to happen again. Yeah, nice. Like you were there for a few years, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, I started going there in 2014. Um, and then right up until I got signed by WWE in uh, 2017, I wrapped up there at the Tokyo Dome show. So um, had a good few years there and spent like, at one point, I think it was, God, I think it was like maybe, th- no, not 30 weeks. Yeah, about 30 week, thirty to 50 weeks a year was over there. So it was a decent amount of time to be, you know, yeah. across the world, like you said. Yeah. And, and so how old were you? Like when, when wrestling first grabbed you, how old were you? Uh, man, so growing up in like during the Attitude Era, you know, I became like an obsessed fan in like 97, 98. And, um, you know, casual, but really not like, you know, ready to dedicate my life to it for any any uh by any means but so uh wwf at the time came to vancouver um it was a general motors place at the time in 98 they did a big pay-per-view event there uh rock bottom and it was my first live event and i just remember everything about that experience my dad took me with a buddy and i remember just walking in the building and walking up the stairs and seeing the ring for the first time and like the smell of the t-shirt and just the, the feeling and the aura and the atmosphere and seeing, you know, 18,000 people go nuts when Stone Cold's music hit was like, it was kind of a life changing sort of religious experience for me. And it just captivated me in such a crazy way. And you know how kids are, like they grow out of things, they have fads. And a lot of my friends grew out of wrestling and it wasn't a cool thing, you know, for a long time when I was in high school. But it was just something that I really loved. And, um, you know, I was an athlete in high school, but I was also kind of a theater kid. And I being, you know, it's a natural progression for pro wrestlers right it's it's sports base and it's acting so it's kind of a, a nice mix of those worlds and um yeah i just i don't know decided <clears throat> this is what i was gonna do yeah so what, what is that like is that your first like wrestling memory then that uh, specific event at at bcrg in place it's not my first memory i like i remember watching you know hulk hogan and stuff way back uh right. when i was really little and imitating him and stuff and posing but <laughs> that's definitely the most like i don't know a memory that i always draw back to when i try and remind myself of why you know i wanted to do this is to maybe make some other kid have that same feeling that i had that day and uh just i just love to entertain and i i love the just the production of wrestling and it's just such an amazing beautiful art form yeah totally and of course you are doing that dude like there's guaranteed there's kids looking at you going like man i want to be like kyle Oh, that's a cool feeling like that hopefully guy. that's true <laughs> how crazy is that so uh like you you mentioned hogan like growing up which were the wrestlers that you were kind of like you know idolizing beyond hogan like ricky the dragon was it like british bulldogs was it yeah, i love man? i love the british bulldogs and hogan and macho man and then of course um brett hart was a huge influence on me um mm-hmm. the hart family in general you know owen as well and then the undertaker like he's a guy that like actually put you know feet like i really believed him like i know this this gimmick or whatever you want to call it is ridiculous this guy is back from the dead but as a kid i hook line and sinker i was into it and i believed it wholeheartedly and uh he's another one then of course stone cold took my fandom to like the next level because he he was really kind of just an absolute mega star at that time for me at that age of being a 12 year old and seeing austin come out and smash beers and and beat the crap out of the boss it was the best right what a time to be a wrestling fan yeah totally. it's really it was really pretty cool so if, if i were to ask you like could you nail it down to one career highlight could you pick one that i've had so far yeah oh man that's a really tough it's a really tough question um i mean it was it was really cool experience to I, i've wrestled in a lot of amazing historic venues and I really that's something that I I think is so cool the fact that I've I've wrestled in Madison Square Garden uh Maple Leaf Gardens the Royal Albert Hall the Tokyo Dome like these are some legendary venues where some some amazing historical matches have happened and amazing performers have have been and it's just really cool to have a that small place in history where you know I've I've been there and I performed there I think that's a really cool thing yeah 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 hard to nail that down to one specific thing though hey yeah right i don't know i'd say madison square garden's pretty cool yeah 
yeah. performing uh, there. Yeah. Not to get too deep on you, Kyle, but uh, what's the long-term goal for you? Like, is there five years from now, like, where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah. For me in five years, I will still be with AEW. I, I signed a five-year deal with them. So yeah. um, hopefully by then, you know, champion of the company or, or uh, you know, a several time tag champion and just, just having fun and never losing that love that I have for the business. You know, it's so easy to get kind of jaded and get bitter and beat up in this line of work because you're know, like, sometimes it's, it's just it's such a grind. You're traveling all the time. You're beat up, you're sore. You're not always getting used. And um, I just, you know, I want to um, just be happy with, with what I've accomplished and satisfied and uh, hopefully just having kick-ass matches. Cause that's really what it's, what it's about for me. It's just about getting in the ring. And uh, I think that's where, you know, Kyle O'Reilly is best suited is just in those ropes and, and trying to have a good, good match with guys. Yeah. So far, so good. So what do you, what do you like better or, or I guess like what are the differences and how do you approach like by yourself versus a tag team? Like, yeah, there must be differences, right? Obviously. It has yeah, to be. totally. Uh, I love them both for different reasons. Like sometimes there's nothing quite like a, a good tag team match is epic. I mean, in like the psychology that you can tell of the good tag team and, and the bad tag team, and they isolate one of the good guys and you control him until you get the big tag to the other guy that's fresh and he whips their ass. Just like, fucking yeah. Makes it. yeah, it's such a, it's such like a, you know, I don't want to say it's an archetype of, of, pro wrestling but it kind of is just the standard tag psychology yeah. and then in a singles match it's just you have so much more of yourself to show and who is this one person you know depending on what the story you're trying to tell is uh it's it's just it's it's epic you know it's singles versus tag it's uh yeah it's it's really hard to capture exactly what it is i mean tag team at least in a tag match you can kind of catch your breath a little and tag out your partner and at least sit on the apron and kind of catch your breath and because it's a, it's it's very physical it's it takes its toll on you oh for sure and and how much uh like as you're wrestling of course you know like the outcome of the match you you know you know who's gonna sure. win stuff, but as you're wrestling like how much are you talking to the person that you're wrestling a fair amount i mean it depends really on how much you, you've called in the back but sometimes what you called in the back doesn't work out or sometimes a crowd may react differently than what you expected and you'll have to call an audible and let's do this instead so there's it's really you never know exactly what, what's going to happen and so many of these like the biggest matches of my career you know the days building up to it the night before like I'm visualizing everything in my head or what we think is supposed to happen and almost every time something insane that you would never expect happens <laughs> and you just have to roll with it and and that's so much of what wrestling is you know it's 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 planned but it certainly isn't choreographed you certainly don't know exactly what's going to happen at every minute and uh, you know just like life it throws you curveballs and you got to deal with it yeah yeah all right kyle let's get outside of uh, wrestling what you're known for for a little bit here Sure. Music in the in the in the Greenwood house as a kid growing up. Like, what are your what are your parents playing? What are you being influenced? My parents. Oh man, my dad, a uh, big psychedelic prog rock guy. Okay, you know, a lot of Pink Floyd, a lot of Zap. Um, my mom loved Elton John, Rod Stewart, Queen, like a lot of classic rock. You know, uh, played in the household growing up, and so you know, I. I I, I'm all about that kind of music now as well. I feel like yeah, yeah. You, you listen yeah. to the radio now. And so here's an oldie and it's like something from the nineties. I'm like, Oh my God, this is, <laughs> I feel like I've aged it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the first concert you went to? Uh, Weird Al Yankovic on tour in uh, Vancouver. I think it was his bad hair day tour. <laughs> it was the first show I ever saw. <laughs> uh, uh, and then, yeah. The first like big boy concert I saw, I think was probably Metallica. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, a couple, you know, even I heard the, the, the Weird Al apparently plays a bunch of like multi-instrumentalist in concert. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was more than a concert. It was a show, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the, the performer of them as well. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let, let me hit you with one that's really tricky to nail down, and I'm sure it may change if I were to ask you tomorrow, but you're, you're stuck on the deserted island. You need three albums. Oh, this, shoot. This will paint a really good picture of like the music of Kyle yeah o'reilly here so which, which albums do you need let's go um nirvana unplugged for those like melancholy days where just you know you're on the island just feel it's like nothing's going your way 
yeah. um, something to kind of pump me up. Let's go. Um, let's go the Black Album by Metallica. Is, um, is let's their, go Master of Puppets. How about that? I was going to say, is that their best album? No, it's not. It's not. But uh, it's just Master most, is one. I just yeah, I'd say Master Lightning. Uh, probably yeah. be my favorite. How would, what would you say? Master. Yeah, yeah. You it, can't go wrong. Master, with Master and Justice. Yeah, yeah. It just there's not enough bass on Injustice for me, you know. I just I miss I missed the Cliff albums and yeah, I think yeah. that the Injustice record for me was the one that really grabbed me for those guys. Like I'd you know I'd heard Master and and, and Ride the Ride the Lightning and all that prior. Yeah, long yeah. Stuff. But once that record, I was like, what the who the hell are these guys? And I went back and actually gave those records a chance and like, nice. You know, now I'm just freaking huge fan of Metallica. Oh, for sure. Yeah uh and then a third i guess i would go um let's go david bowie ziggy stardust uh, nice, just because it's dude. such a good record like every wow. song just kicks ass on it and it's just it's it's uplifting and it's emotional and it's it's kind of got it all i think no, that's a great choice uh as far as like deaths of musicians where's where did bowie fall in the holy man i'm like kind of bummed out like yeah absolutely that was on man a big show and then you find out like the story of it and like how much he knew and what he put into that last record and like the weird sort of lyrics and symbolism behind that oh, last right. video or whatever right there was some weird yeah. stuff going on there um just heartbreaking though he was such a he was a he was a master um another guy that you know kind of grew up on with my parents influence as well was him so yeah yeah man how about but, you do you got three off the top of your head that you would pick uh, right now albums holy fuck nobody's ever twisted it on me uh it would definitely be a metallic album for sure probably probably master yeah probably uh probably a bob marley record uh legend i guess and uh probably zep four or mm-hmm. Or Houses of the Holy is a good one too. Yeah, no, I mean that's another thing. Like, what's the best album from those guys? Are you a big right. Beatles fan? They're like, that's the yeah, possible the Beatles. One. Like, yeah, that is what? a tough one. If you could only pick one, that would be tough. I'd probably mm-hmm. go with Sgt. Pepper's or Abbey Road. Maybe Abbey Road or Sgt. Pepper's are yeah. my two favorites from them. I think uh, I think Revolver is probably my favorite. My kid was my firstborn was born to the Revolver album, so it's kind of no hard kidding. To get away from that one. Yeah, no kidding. That's a that's a tricky one, man. Zeppelin, yeah. Marley. Fuck, uh, can we do four? <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard one. Yeah, but then you got it. Like you got these uh, LPs, and you, nothing to spin them on. You're just stuck with the, the, yeah, the yeah. albums. <laughs> totally <laughs> like damn it, I co- should have brought. Yeah. You make a coconut record player like <laughs> what are you uh what are you binge watching lately man uh what did what are we watching um so my wife never watched uh, game of thrones during the first run so we're watching that again wow. and um i don't know if you, you watched game of thrones at all but it was it was amazing oh, yeah. the first time around yeah. now that i know everything that's happening it's still kind of it's pretty nuts it's Crazy. intense we're getting you're getting near the end of season three so things are about to get wild yeah yeah, you got anything good? Uh, right now I'm watching Merlin. Merlin, it's what's that? Good. Like it's not amazing, but it's pretty good. It's it's a you know it's just a young Merlin. Merlin like the oh shit Cam- Camelot Merlin right with yeah the, yeah King Arthur that kind of shit. It's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, um, just trying to think of like ones that you wouldn't necessarily have heard of. Of course, like all the all the regular ones, right? Like fucking Ozark's amazing. Mm. Um. <laughs> Yeah, just trying to think. Oh, uh, uh, what was the one that my buddy introduced me to a little while back? Love, Love, Death, and Robots. Oh, I've been checking that out. I've seen a couple episodes of that. It's weird, yeah. right? That's yeah, so pretty cool. Like it's just standalone episodes, right? And yeah, it's so yeah. I like that. Fuck, right? Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. You know, it's a tough one. Uh, I I do love all like the superhero stuff. You know, Daredevil. Sure. Do you catch Flash. the new Batman yet? No, and I heard it's Dude, like sinister it's so and dark sick. and fucking gritty. It's the and best. Just like, I heard it's, it's like, like the best one. It's like, you know, did you ever see the animated series that was in during the 90s, Batman the animated series? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very similar to that, but like in a good way. Like it's dark and just, I don't know, man. It's it's really cool. Okay. And he's like a detective. It's kind of like a it's like seven or like the Zodiac killer movie, you know? Like it's, it's, the same it's thing. very so, yeah do you say it's like the best batman movie 
I think so. And I'm a, I'm a Batman diehard, so I think it's my favorite Batman for sure. Wow. Seen it a couple times, actually. <laughs> wow, no kidding. Okay, so, so... you could say I'm binging that yeah, <laughs> over yeah. and over. D- D- <laughs> binging a movie? <laughs> yeah. Uh, DC or, or Marvel? Oh, uh, man. I mean, Marvel's just killed it so hard, obviously. How do you go against them? But, the, like, DC's making a comeback. I, if, it's, if they are, then starting with this. Movie. Hey, the Nolan trilogy for Batman is good, too. Uh, this is just such oh, a different take on it. It's really good. Yeah, and even the uh, even that uh, the Joker that they uh, that they, was uh, unreal. Phoenix did man was like, yeah, wow. just the acting alone was yeah. unreal. Right, which is like, something yeah. cool that DC is doing a little more avant garde, artistic sort of movies. You know, cool. noiry type. Yeah. yeah, like Marvel, it's kind of okay. It's kind of campy and a little bit corny sometimes. So a DC's little a little more adult, <laughs> and, and it's and it's almost at that like guys come on i know right how many times like, you know look into the camera and say oh it sounded better in my head when i said it <laughs> like, i know right like for me it's like man i'm a huge comic book fan like I, yeah that, that, that monopolized most of my time as a little kid right sure and it's like even as a big fan like that like yeah it's almost we're almost borderline too much almost yeah yeah we're in there. yeah yeah we, i just want to see an X, x-men make a comeback in a new uh wolverine cast so i'm looking forward to that well that logan We've seen Logan, right? Oh, Logan was amazing. But yeah, I would that's, say that that's might be the best, best Marvel movie. Yeah, that's the best Marvel movie for sure. Yeah, yeah. and I've heard yeah. that the that the Batman's the best DC. It's kind um, of Logan esque. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which superpower would you want to have? Oh, you got to fly, right? Got to got to be flying. Come on, teleport, man. Teleport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Teleport. Would be pretty cool. <laughs> teleport. Would teleport. Be just be right there with your. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Like um. Uh, what's his nuts in X Men? Um, oh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, but Nightcrawler could only teleport to where he could see. That's true. And or then, place he's been, or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, as far as sports, uh, we we quickly touched on MMA. Are you a big MMA fight fan? Um, I mean, I I enjoy training, man. I love training jujitsu and kickboxing just because it relates so much to pro wrestling and the style that I like to represent in the ring. I mean, I would, I, I still I love watching the fights, but I'm not so diehard where I could name all the contenders or the champions right now. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, obviously, big Canucks fan, or are you? Are, yeah, oh yeah. Did you, or did you jump Canucks over fan, to Florida? Yeah. No, God, no. Uh, yeah, Canucks have broken my heart many times, so it's got to be got to be all in on them now at this point right Over two cup there. runs in my lifetime and just uh each one more bitter than the next <laughs> i know right what, what, what do you remember most about the the 2010 um i was living in st louis at the time uh just dating my girlfriend soon uh which would become my wife and i was came home for the like the finals or whatever and just uh being heartbroken and uh just being you know th- that vibe in the city was unreal that run too right like because i was at the age where i could be going downtown with the bars it was just nuts yeah. and just heartbreaking too when you see the mess that people made it's just that's not cool I know. and then i remember coming back to st louis and people were like oh look what the, look the people in vancouver did well oh, p- pathetic i'm like shut up like yeah you guys like yeah you guys shoot up each other all the time like it's not that bad vancouver <laughs> yeah we flipped some cars and fucking burnt yeah. some garbage and shit but like yeah i was doing my my radio show uh like right downtown at the lot right the, at the library there and they'd closed off that street i can't remember the name of the street there but they had these big ass screens and shit and like dude once it got to like you know the bruins were up like four two or whatever it was yeah these water oh. bottles are flying across and shit i'm like fuck i'm not staying here man i called my yeah. wife i'm like yeah i'll be home yeah. right after my shift yeah yeah i think yeah. the olympics are a much fonder memory of yeah. uh, you know, the golden goal that was at least you know positive spin on vancouver sports <laughs> was that <laughs> was uh winter olympics yeah, 2010 all right kyle i, I want to respect your time man i'll ask you a couple more questions and i'll let you go here sure man uh i'm curious are you are you much of a gambler not really I mean, I, I feel like every time I, I, I uh, go to work, I kind of gamble like my health and my my life in some respects. Uh, so there are not a lot of extra extracurricular gambling. Yeah. Like I've thrown dice a couple times and we'll play the slots here and there, but not not really hardcore. Okay, okay. Well, this spins into spins nicely into the last question or okay. I guess the last story. I want you to share 
a, a near death story where you're like, holy shit, I could have just died there. Yeah. Um, probably in, God, it was, must've been like 2015 now, but it, either way I was, it was, I was driving home from Chicago. I'd just done the ring of honor show there. And I was driving to where I was staying in a small town in Jacksonville, Illinois, which is maybe like 200 miles south of Chicago. And it was really late. And I was so tired. Like I'd been probably up for like, I'd just gotten back from tour in Japan. I was, I was jet lagged. It was late. I was just driving, just worked a show. Anyways, I'm on this really dark highway. There's no lights or anything. And on the side of the road, like I just see like a, like a coyote. I'm like, Oh, whoa, like a coyote. And it kind of jolted me awake. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of weird. Like, isn't the coyote supposed to represent like an omen or something like that? And I'm thinking this in my head and I'm like, man, I really got like, man, if that thing was crossing the road, that could have been like, could have been bad, whatever. And I was like, I really got to wake up and I'm almost there. Okay. Whatever. Like two minutes later, suddenly, like it was foggy too. Suddenly there's a deer in the middle of the road. And I was like, Whoa, I, you know, I know you're not supposed to slam, but whatever your instincts kick in. So I slammed the brakes and like, Whoa. I missed the deer. It was a, like a big ass deer too, by like an inch, man. It would have like completely totaled my car. And I like stopped yeah. and it just instantly just started to rain. It was like, it was like a movie, man. It was wild. And I was up, like, I was so tired. I was up for like hours after that. My heart just pumping. I finally got like <laughs> into the bed and I was just like, that was nuts, dude. Like the coyote omen. It was, it was nuts. <laughs> White knuckle in it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah big time. What an interesting Great. question. Yeah. I, I ask it only because like, I mean, I, I have a ton and, and almost everybody I ask has one like 95 percent of people are like oh dude yeah did this did that like lots of uh lots of driving stories lots yeah. of drowning stories oh that's a scary one i know right like holy fuck dude like w w how would you rather die from drowning or burn <sighs> to death you know like oh yeah it's rough both sound terrible like no thanks man but yeah everybody i ask man mm -hmm. everybody has one it's crazy mm -hmm. yeah brush with it but Anyway, Kyle, thanks, man, for for taking some time here to join us the Toddcast in uh, in your yeah, home in Vancouver, Canada. No, it's rad. It's rad getting to chat with you, dude. Um, you used to listen to you on the radio all the freaking time on CFOX. So, oh, it's, sweet. It's cool to get to chat and uh, you know put a voice uh, a face to the voice. Right on, man. Well, you're easy to find uh, online at K O R Combat, both Twitter and Instagram. You have a ton of people following you as you should. And, uh, I guess we'll see you online. Thanks so much, man. Great chatting. Anytime. Thanks, dude.